Commodore Call, this year's show for the Falmouth Commodores. I'm Bryn Foley, a rising senior at Syracuse University, and I'll be the field reporter this year. Yeah, my name is Joe Weil, I just graduated from Boston University, and I'm going to be the play-by-play -play guy along with this guy here on the right. And I'm his broadcast partner, Michael Tricarico. I also go to Syracuse, I'll be a junior in the fall. Now, Falmouth went 26 and 17 last year, dominating the Western Division. They sweep Tyannis Inc. to it, eventually losing to champion YD Red Sox in the championship round. Nine returning players last year, this year only one. What do you guys expect out of the team at this year? Well, I'm looking to see how their offense is going to rebound this year. They lost a couple just got dropped by the Pittsburgh Giants, 19th overall. So I'm going to see what they're going to do with their offense. But we're going to look to that outfield. They have a lot of power hitters in that outfield. It'll be interesting to see how they move out there. I agree with the, the hitting. Lots of guys who can hit for contact, but also, also some power bats to look forward to and some, some exciting offense. I think I can see this numbers team. So, with so many new players, who stands out to you guys the most this year? I'm going to be Heath Quinn. He's an outfielder from Sanford University. Hit 340 for runs. He was a freshman All American for their team. He, he's a great hitter. We're going to see a lot of him this summer. And for you, Michael? I'm looking at Andrew Snow, infielder, primarily second base for Arizona State. He's a guy who hits for contact, not that power bat. Hit 300, though, for, for Arizona State this year, the Sun Devils. And I think he's going to be one of those uh, middle of the lineup guys who's going to get on base. Uh, now, Puma White is a transfer from TCU to Texas AM. He's the only returner this year for Falmouth. He was a big part of the championship run last year in the outfield. What do you guys expect from him as a leader, both on and off the field? I think that having a guy that was here last year it will certainly help the transition for a lot of these new guys. And really being the, the one only guy, you know, it's nice to have that at least one guy to go to. Uh, unfortunately, there's not nine that we had last year, but to be able to have that one guy, he's going to be the leader. He's going to be, you know, quote unquote captain, uh, the guy that these other players can look up to and ask them about, you know, all the, the past experiences and, and what they can look forward to. So. Now, Mitch Longo will be joining White in the outfield out of Ohio University. He was the Mid American Conference Player of the Year this year. What do you guys expect him to do on the field? Well, I mean, he's got a track record. He hit really well as freshman year, he hit really well as sophomore year, so hopefully he can just bring what he's been doing in the college game here to the Cape Cod League. What about you, Michael? Yeah, a guy who hit over 350, slugged almost 500. He's one of those power backs. You know, he, he's a guy that uh, isn't, isn't going to just hit for contact, he's swinging for the fences. Uh, Hit seven home runs this year. Again, the 357 average. He's one of those power bats that's going to be able to hit him. The other guys that are getting on base. Like a of so for content. All right, now I spoke to Coach Trundy a couple minutes ago about what he expects from his team this year. Now, Coach, it's your 21st year in the Keep League, 19th as head coach for the Falmouth Commodores. What's it like being back? Great. It's fantastic. It's always exciting. I, I think the start of the season uh, always feels the same. There's always that excitement and anticipation of playing the first game and seeing the kids play and get out there. You know, hopefully, hey, we'll, uh, we'll have some success, but at the same time, I think most importantly, the kids, you know, are here to get better each day and have a great experience. Now, last year you had nine returning players. This year, only one, Boomer White. What does that mean for you as a coach? Well, I think it's always an advantage to have some returning players, uh, not necessarily from the standpoint of performance as much as it is that they kind of know the routine. And they can hand that on to, to the guys that are doing the lead. But, you know, Boomer will, will take that lead and take that charge. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that, you know, he will be able to pass on valuable information to guys. You know, what do we do each day? What should the approach be? How can you get the most out of your opportunity? So we'll count on Boomer to do that this year. Oh, yeah. And with temp players and the roster changing so frequently, I know it's hard to tell, but does anyone stand out to you right now as a player in practices? Uh, I mean, to me, in all honesty, I mean, they've all worked hard, and, and we've been we've been so occupied, to be honest, this probably sounds like we're not concerned that much with what our performance is going to be on the field, but we've been so concerned with just getting the field ready and getting ready to play. Uh, everything's kind of been a blur the last few days, so we'll see what brings, you know, what the game brings tonight, and, uh, you know, hopefully, like I said, we'll go out and play a good game, and uh, if 
you know, take it from there. Perfect. Good luck tonight. Thanks, Brent. Now the Falmouth Colonors play the Hyannis Harbor Hawks tonight for the first game. They swept them last year in the Western Division semifinals. What do you guys expect Hyannis to bring tonight? Well, it'll be interesting to see what they do this year offensively. Last year they had the second lowest batting average in the Cape League. They do have some good hitters this year. One of them, Nick Papas, four home runs, 28 doubles this past season for the College of Charleston. He'll be probably one of the big hitters in this tournament. Yeah, the hitting, definitely. But I think the one thing we have to keep in mind is that this game isn't going to be an indication of what the rest of the summer is going to be like. Lots of guys still playing in the College World Series. That's still going on. Uh, not everyone's here yet. we got some temporary players. So the current rosters aren't exactly what we're going to see for the rest of the summer. It should still be a fun game. There's still great players here. But this, what, what happens tonight isn't going to be, I don't think, an indication of what we'll see necessarily for the rest of the summer. Now game time is set for 6 o'clock p.m. Stay tuned.